بوك او توب او توب اوكي او توب نعم عبد الرحمن لا ابو أه... لا ابن you got your choice ah no no ah the born adam لا what is called the ethiopian knife what is called the ethiopian knife a knife ethiopian knife what is called the ethiopian knife and this is exactly how the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it two knives not to be used and then in the same narration when he mentioned the bone he said the truth is from bone allahu akbar look the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not go to no harvest but he know that the bone, the, the truth is made from out of is is from is bone the second type of knife the one is not to be using is what the ethiopian knife when you go home inshallah ta'ala ask your your search engine what is the ethiopian knife so not knowing it mashallah we safe and my sheep is safe inshallah <laughs> I mean. Tayyib, so therefore, inshallah ta'ala, please bear with me and we finish it, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. The number two is about what to be said. What to be said in regard to when the person he will slaughter or he will sacrifice an animal. He mentioned that number one, that the person will lay the animal on its left side. He will lay the animal on its left side. The animal will be laid on its left side. And this is very easily understood. It will give you a very good angle to slaughter the animal. The animal lay laying on its left side, right? You will have the throat on your right side. So you will be having, alhamdulillah, a very good angle to be, to be very quick with a sharp knife. Right? So it will not be awkward with your positioning. So, yep. So laying the end, the end, the animal with the with the with the what you call it the the on the left side. Now one man wanna say, okay, how about those who are left-handed? But know that alhamdulillah in the matters of the Sharia, that the left hand is to be used in regard to cleaning up filth and the likes of that. But amma the matters of the ibadah, alhamdulillah, one has to do what? Has to take it with his right. So therefore, the person slaughtering with with his right. This is Alhamdulillah to be, to be established. So therefore the person will be mentioning. He will mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be wujuban. This will be an obligation. It will be an obligation. And it will be an obligation when he will be making the move. Meaning when he will be making the movement. He will be what? Saying the Bismillah. Allahu Akbar and he will say these words Allahumma hadha minka Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillah it is why it's important to read different different explanation of different things and Alhamdulillah we read this statement a whole lot of time but what was the meaning that Allahumma hadha minka hadha minka wa laka what was the meaning of it Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah This is one of the things that we benefited Among other things we benefited from this book Because Allahumma hadha minka Bima ya'ni ni'matan Meaning this favor It is indeed from you Wa laka mukhlisan And it is for you Meaning in sincerity from us This is indeed coming from you as a favor and this is indeed for you alone are uh, showing our sincerity, our, but for us being sincere in our action. It is not sacrifice for no one else, but for you, laka only. Allahu Akbar. So therefore the person will be saying, Alhamdulillah, this, Bismillah, Wallahu Akbar. And he will say, Allahumma hadha minka wa laka. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma hadha minka wa laka. And let, but alhamdulillah, when the people, they go to, to be in to, to gather sacrifice, let, alhamdulillah, us remind one another upon this. Because when there will be a lot of turmoil and a lot of chaos, people, oh, don't do this, don't do that, people tend to forget about these things. 
The shaitan will creep in and make us forget about this important issues right here. But now if one forget to say it, whether he forget about it, sahwan, aw nasiyan, he forget about it, meaning barakallahu feekum, it was like a, 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 just a slight, he forgot, right, he forgot, he, he forgot, then he will remember Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala at the time that he remembers it. He will say the same thing, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahumma hadha minka wa laka. طيب. So when he remembers it, he will say it. So if the person does not say it now, he does not say it muta'amidan purposely, then this is not permissible to eat that sacrifice and it will not be considered to be, to be udhiyah. Insha'Allah ta'ala that we should remain is the time frame for the udhiyya. When does the time frame for the udhiyya comes in? The Shaykh Hafizahullah tabaraka wa ta'ala he said that the udhiyya it start from the time that min intiha in nas min salat ayyi salatul eid. That the udhiyya, the time frame starts when? When? The people finish their salat. When the people finish their salatul eid. When they finish the Salatul Eid. Not when they finish the Khutbatul Eid. But rather when they finish the Salatul Eid. Right? He mentioned, فَإِذَا فَإِذَا انْتَهَى النَّاسُ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَالْخُطْبَ أَيْضًا وَالْخُطْبَ أَيْضًا مِنْ بَابِ التَّأْكِيدِ He say, if the people they finished or they dismissed from the Salah and the Khutbah also, and after the Khutbah it is to Barakallahu Fikum, give more emphasis in regard to the time frame. He say, فَإِنَّهُ يُشْرَعُ هُنَا And it will be from that time frame, legislated to the starting point of the Udhiyah. So it is not linked with the Imam to sacrifice first. As commonly and the people used to, oh, they're going to wait till the imam sacrifice first for them to sacrifice. Right? Alhamdulillah, if the imam sacrifice first, he can do that. La bas bidhalika. Right? But to make it mandatory that you're going to wait for the imam to sacrifice, for you to sacrifice, هذا يحتاج به الدليل. That necessitates a proof and evidence for that. Right? And you find everybody, they will be waiting for the imam to sacrifice. So that the whole musalla will be circling around waiting for the imam to sacrifice. Right? But rather, when the people pray, now whether the person prayed or not, whether the person prayed or not, whether the person prayed or not, when the salah is done or the khutbah is done, then, walhamdulillah, this is where the time frame of the Udhiya start. So, the best time to slaughter is the day of Eid, the day, the ayyah, the yawmun nahr. The day of nahr, meaning the tenth day. And also, it ends at, barakallahu feekum, the last day of the, the last day of the ayyamu tashriq. Meaning, three days after the tashriq. The last day of ayyamu tashriq. The last day of ayyamu tashriq. Now the other issue, inshallah, we cover real quick, is, is it permissible, is it permissible to sacrifice at night? Is it permissible to sacrifice at night? He say, ظَاهِرُ الْآيَةِ That the appearing meaning of this verse, where Allah Jalla wa Ala, He mentioned, وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ شوف, فِي أَيَّامٍ during the days, right? The days, ayyamin, during the days. So what is appearing in this verse is that the sacrifice is to be done during the daytime. What is appearing from this verse is that the sacrifice is to be done, the slaughtering is to be done, done during the, the daytime. But the Shaykh Hafizahullah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he mentioned that, and after mentioning the statement of the ulama, he say that what is the qawlul rajah is, that a person will be rewarded if he slaughter at night, but it is something that is dislike. It is something that is dislike. He has one can slaughter at night, but but it is he will be rewarded along, along with it being being dislike. And this is based on what is being the, uh, the apparent meaning of the verse. 
What is the opinion mean of the verse? So alhamdulillah to sacrifice it on the day of the of the Eid. This is alhamdulillah that which barakallahu feekum is yani, to, to the, the best action to be done. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that there is no, no act of the, of the son of Adam that he will do that is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Nahr except that is to slaughter the animal, meaning to spill the blood of the animal, to sacrifice the animal. So, yep. so inshallah ta'ala, this is that which we wanted to present and because of the time we had a little left in regard to the sharing. How many people can share an animal? Inshallah ta'ala, perhaps uh, we will cover it another time or uh, from referring back to the previous classes or refer back to alhamdulillah the audios that are present from those who are the most qualified than us from the tulab and without a doubt from the scholars that they work so alhamdulillah present if there was any mistake that I have done may Allah jalla ala forgive me and guide me to what is correct and guide you all to that which is correct wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in and do not be forgetting about the takbirat right after the taslim the takbirat right after the taslim inshallah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Or oh, one can do three, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Subhanak Allahumma rabbana, alhamdulillah, 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 ilaha illallah, and astaghfir wa atubu ilayhi. Allahumma, 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 Yes.